Fran Robinson welcoming you to another episode of Used Bike Heaven, the show that takes the legwork out of finding the right used bike for you. Each week we work hard to find three bikes for our lucky punter and then furnish them with all the facts they'll need to make the purchase. In this week's show we've some sporty little V-twin machines for those of you who may be shorter in the leg than you might like. And of course our ever-reliable Dr Rod will be on hand to give you some vital tips on living with a used bike. So let's meet this week's rider. Kareem Gulamali is 39 and works as a quality and health and safety manager for a medical company. He's been riding for about 14 years and owns, amongst others, an R1. Kareem is on the search for a naked middleweight V-twin for both he and his wife Terry to share, a low seat height being the main priority. So Kareem's got between three and five thousand pounds to spend on a nice naked V-twin for him and his wife to share through the summer. Given this budget, we've been able to round up three bikes aged between one and three years old. Now, unfortunately, the naked V-twin category isn't very well catered for when it comes to terms of variety. However, quality is a different kettle of fish, and I think Kareem is going to have a tough decision on his hands. Let's see what's first up this week. First up is the sporty little Suzuki SV650. First introduced in 1999 to much acclaim, it became an instant success for both new riders and those for whom insurance costs might be an issue. Ladies and riders of smaller stature also took to this bike as it provided a fast and fun alternative to the cruisers and Japanese imports which at that time were their only choices. Despite being built to a budget, the SV650 had a reasonably powerful engine with adequate suspension and if ridden well could surprise many a sports bike rider down a twisty road. With the new look model arriving in 2003, this bike's success looks set to continue for some time yet. Hi Kareem. Hi Fran. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Good, good. You look a little cold. Yeah, it's a bit chilly in the wind, but the sun's out, so it nice is. day for riding. We can't complain. No. You found bike number one. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I was going to ask you what you think to it. Very impressed. It's nice, uh, nice modern styling, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to riding it. Well, you're after a naked V-twin. Correct, yeah, that's part of what we're looking for. That's it. It's we need to know one. what you think. Do you want to get your helmet on? Indeed. Let us know. OK. This SV650 is a 2003 model priced at £3,995. The little SV is a solid, reliable bike that received an updated chassis and fuel injection for 2003. The looks of this unfaired version are not too dissimilar to the old model. The new frame and fuel injection give it a more civilised ride, although the seat is no longer as comfortable as it once was. Reliability has never been an issue and the owners tend to be a loyal bunch, willing to help their fellow owners out with advice and ideas via many dedicated websites. The one area that lets this bike down is the budget suspension. Having no adjustment other than the preload means you either need to live with it or fit aftermarket parts, of which there are many. So Kareem, how was it for you? Lovely, thoroughly enjoyed that. What did you like about it? I was surprised how smooth it was. Much more than I anticipated for a V-twin. Really? Good and ride. Power? Yeah, plenty of it through traffic. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get an opportunity to, to really try top end. Yeah. But more than enough for round town, really good. Handles all right? Yeah, yeah, nice and light. Slightly tall, but um, no, it was good. Right. Comfort wise? Yeah, aside from the height thing, it's yeah. very, very comfortable. Nice padded seat. Yeah. But um, yeah. Very good. Because you want this bike, don't you, for you and your partner Terry to, to play on, really? That's right. We've got a few other options, but we want something a bit more... Uh, a naked bike, a traditional looking bike, and Terry wants to move from a 400 to a 600. Right. And then that's the style we're looking for. OK, so we've got to bear that in mind as well, haven't we? We do, yeah. Well, fantastic. So, we need to give each bike a score. We have categories on a scoreboard, so we need to know what you give the Suzuki SV650. OK. So, for style? Seven. And performance? Impressed with that, we'll go for an eight on that. Okay, and practicality? Because it's a little bit too tall, we'll go back for seven. Right. Reliability? Yeah, I can't see any problems with it, so another seven. And value for money? Seven, definitely. So, that's the Suzuki SV650, which I think it's fair to say you're quite happy with. Yeah, no enjoyed it. No major problems there, mm, is no. there? Okay, but well, you don't have to decide just yet, because we're going to go on to bike number two, a big contender in the biking world. The Monster is Ducati's best-selling model and when you ride it, it's not hard to see why. The Monster 620 features an air-cooled V-twin that gives capable performance and allows a relaxed riding style. Ally that to high bars and you have possibly the ultimate town bike that will also allow you to have some fun if any twisties come your way. 
Only the non-adjustable suspension and low-slung exhaust will spoil your fun. This bike has plenty of character and has those Italian good looks that just catch people's eyes as you ride past. The lovely V-twin burble resonating off the buildings just adds to your enjoyment. So, Kareem, bike number two. I don't know if you're into these, but I know a lot of people that are. Oh, yes. This is the bike. It's very pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it looks really looks the part. Yeah. I mean, it's a 620 engine. Yep. Is that a problem? No, I think it's probably about the ideal choice for us. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we've got Terry to consider in all this as well, haven't we? Yep. Yeah, so, uh, and I mean, you were talking earlier on about the seat height. Yeah. Very low seat. Hence ideal, I think. It's the lowest one that I've seen so far. Yeah, should be perfect. Well, we need you to see what it feels like and we need you to get on your bike. With pleasure. Marvellous. The Monster has been many a new biker's introduction to two-wheeled fun, so let's see how Kareem gets on with this 2003 model priced at 3995. Ducati's Baby Monster has been around since 1993, remaining virtually unchanged until 2001, when it received a new fuel-injected motor and swing arm, giving it a new lease of life and making what was already a great bike better. The main improvement was the addition of a second front brake disc, giving enhanced stopping power. This 03 Reg model has around 59 brake horsepower, which is sufficient given the bike's budget suspension. Cornering can be fun, but if you get a little carried away, you may feel like you're on an Italian space hopper. So, Kareem, the Monster 620, what do we think? Slightly disappointed. Oh no, why? Um, it's the engine. I think there's either a fault with the fueling or something, but it's just not revving cleanly. Oh. Yeah, it just seems to, it idles nicely and then it jumps. Yeah. Or when you're putting the power on, it seems to shudder and then it goes through it. So it's a tad disconcerting. Oh, and disappointing, like you say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's normal. I don't think it's normal, so I think we'll have to go back to the Yeah, uh, the I'd hope it's not, because yeah. it's, it's a lovely looking bike mm. and it's, it's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, Riding good. position all right, too? Lovely, yeah, through town, no problem at all. It's mm -hmm. upright, got nice wide bars. Yeah. Uh, seat height's good for me and the brakes. Fantastic. Marvellous, that's always really good, good to know because you weren't happy with them on the SV. Yeah, in comparison to the SV, these are light years ahead. Really, really? good. Yep. Fantastic. Now, I meant to ask you before, things like the dials, mm. what are they looking like? Well, on the SV, it's a nice big clear LCD, liquid crystal display, mm. and a big uh, ref counter. Mm. On here, the ref counter is good, but the myelometer itself, the speedometer rather, it's very cluttered. I thought you might, that's yeah. why I asked you. Yeah, yeah you were there. and. Um, it's, it's, it's okay, but it does sort of blur into one. Yeah. It gets a bit confusing. They're trying to be too pretty with it. Those Italian designers <laughs> have got carried away. Yeah, it's a traditional Italian flair. <laughs> well, never mind. Oh, I'm so disappointed about the power, but we need to go to the scoreboards and see what you give the Ducati. Okay. So, Cream, what do you give it for style? Style's got to be a nine. Absolutely. And performance? Yeah, that engine problem. Uh, the, the weight stands six. Right. And practicality? No problems with that. Good seven for that. Good, good. And reliability? Again, you hear all the rumours, but I'm sticking with a seven. I would if I were you. And value for money? I think that's good. We'll, we'll have an eight. OK. So, in actual fact, and cream, it didn't do too badly, despite its little problem on the scoreboard. Just a quirk, I think, but yeah. so we'll have to see. Hopefully. Hmm. Hopefully. I'm glad you're not put off. No, well, no. Well, that's two out of the three bikes, but of course we have got bike number three to reveal yet, haven't we? Yep, looking forward to that. Absolutely. But before we do that, it's time to go to Dr Rod, who's going to give us some essential tips on living with a used bike. Now, as many as two-thirds of all UK breakdown recoveries are due to electrical problems. And, of course, the heart of any vehicle's electrical system is its battery. Now, the battery on your bike will need some maintenance every now and again. And the first thing you need to find out is whereabouts your battery lives. On this particular bike, the battery is under the seat down here. I've disconnected the two terminals from the battery, starting with the negative one first, before lifting the battery out like that. And then there are several things I can check on it. The first one is the fluid level, which you can see here. If that fluid level is low, it can be topped up through these yellow plastic caps at the top. And you must use distilled water for that. Don't use anything else because it can damage the battery. Now, if your battery is flat, you can charge it up with a Commoner Garden domestic battery charger like this one, and that'll be quite adequate for the job. But if you do have a few more pounds to spend, a specialist device like this one can be much better. This will not only charge the battery, as it is doing here, but it can also be left connected to it while the bike's in storage. That'll put a trickle charge into the battery and make sure that it's ready to go when you're ready to take your bike out after the winter layup. 
If all else fails, of course, you may have to buy a new battery. And just be aware that if you buy one mail order, it will come without any acid in it like that. That's a dry charge battery. And to commission that up and get it ready for service, you'll have to take it to a specialist dealer and have it filled with acid. The good news is, though, that it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg. I'll be hearing more from Rod later. So far this week, Kareem from Leon C has tested the Suzuki SV650, which he quite liked, and the Ducati Monster 620, which had a little bit of a power problem. After the break, we'll be revealing bike number three, which is just a little bit different. So we'll see how it shapes up against bikes one and two. See you then. Welcome back to Used Bike Heaven. This week, Kareem from Leon C, who currently owns an R1, amongst others, is looking for a naked V-twin to share with his wife, Terry. He's already tested the SV650 and the Monster 620, and now is about to go out on his third and final test. Let's go to bike number three. Last but not least, it's the Suzuki Bandit 600. The Bandit is the joker in this week's pack, featuring an inline four as opposed to Kareem's request for a V-twin. Maybe its smoother power delivery will tempt him away from those throbby twins. This is the bike that revitalised the naked middleweight category. Suzuki spotted a gap in the market, raided their parts bins and popped out the Bandit. This bike was extremely well received and sold by the shipload, catching all the opposition unawares. Power is a credible 80 brake horsepower, giving reasonable performance, but the engine does need to be worked hard to get the most from it. Budget suspension once again rears its ugly head, meaning the Bandit isn't up there with the class leaders when it comes to handling. So Kareem, bike number three. You're probably looking at me a bit strangely, really, because we've kept the naked theme, mm -hmm. but we've dropped the V-twin theme for bike number three. Yep. We know you're a fan of, uh, of fours, so we thought we'd go along that line. Yeah. What do you think to the looks of the Bandit? It looks um, nice. Average, but more than capable, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Steady looking, isn't it? That's it. Right. OK, well, we need to know what you think to the ride of it. Of course. So do you want to get your helmet on and let us know? Love to. Kareem is testing the 2001 Suzuki Bandit 600, priced at 3495, making it the cheapest bike in this week's trio. Suzuki's Bandit is no longer the class leader, but it is still a capable little bike. Many of them were bought by first-time bikers, so do make sure to check for damage caused by accidents or even the novice trick of just simply dropping the bike. The suspension was never the best and may well have given up the ghost on a well-used example, so make sure to check and haggle the selling price accordingly. So then, Kareem, the Suzuki Bandit, what do we think? Hey, it's quite good, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't do it for you, does it? It's, it's nothing wrong with the bike. It's, yeah. it's very smooth, it's very quiet, but there's no soul. No. Something missing. You want that aggression, don't yeah. you, behind the yeah. V-twin, the, the kind of, I don't know, engine braking and all the rest of it. The sound, the passion, yeah. Yeah, hmm. OK. I mean, let's, let's judge this bike then. Looks like a nice, big, comfy seat to me. It is. Comfort-wise, not a problem. Yeah? It's quite good. Yeah? Seat, seating position, you know, the riding position? Again, fairly upright, bars are nicely positioned. Height-wise, again, fine for me. Yeah? Not bad at all. Right. <laughs> I'm not getting any <laughs> passion there at all. <laughs> OK, no worries. Well, we need to know what you give it on the scoreboard. Of course. OK. So, Kareem, what do you give it for style? Styling's OK. We'll go with a six. And performance? Again, nothing special, but uh, worth a six. Practicality? Very good. Go with eight for that. OK. And reliability? Never heard any bad stories about them, so I'll have a seven. OK, and a value for money? Not good, I'm afraid. Mm. I'm going to have a five. OK, then. Well, surprisingly, Kareem, mm -hmm. the monster with the power problem actually wins overall on the scoreboard with 37 points. Right. Okay. So you obviously did like that and hope that it's just the, uh, the power problem of that particular yeah. bike. I think the styling wins hands down. If the problem with the engine can be sorted out, then I can't see it being any concern at all. Well, before you make your final decision, it's time to go to Dr. Rod, who's going to give us a recap on each bike. Suzuki's middleweight V-twin has become a benchmark for cheap, dependable fun and has rapidly built a large and dedicated following. It's a good solid bike and it won't let you down, only the rather soggy suspension and slightly iffy finish marring the image. The seat height isn't as low on this bike as the original SV, but the V-twin motor makes plenty of usable power. For a mass-produced Japanese bike, it also has a surprising amount of character. It doesn't have the exotic appeal of the Ducati, but it may be a more practical bike to own. And SVs are in demand so Kareem won't lose too much money when he comes to trade it in. I reckon this is the safe option. 
Whichever way you look at it, a Ducati has an appeal that ordinary mass-produced bikes simply can't match. These bikes are hand-built and everyone comes with a bumper helping of heritage. But being hand-built, it will need a bit more looking after than the Japanese opposition. Regular servicing is essential and there are still tales in the trade about electrical problems and problems with reliability. This bike is young enough not to have suffered too much, but a Ducati is not the kind of bike you can put in the shed and ignore. Take this home and you're getting a new member of the family, with all the joys and pitfalls that that entails. At 3995, I'll give this one a cautious thumbs up. Not too long ago, the Suzuki Bandit was at the cutting edge of everyone's desirability and everybody wanted one. The problem is that everybody subsequently got one, and they're now about as common as the Ford Mondeo, with roughly the same amount of charisma. A shame, really, is the Bandit is a good solid bike and makes a useful daily tool, but next to the lusty power delivery of the V-Twins, the four-cylinder engine may feel just a little bland. But there's a whole culture of accessories and tuning bits if Kareem is tempted by the four, and the data tool alarm on this bike will keep the insurance premium manageable. The Bandit is a safe bet, but maybe just a little bit too ordinary. And at 3495, it's not cheap. So Kareem, you've ridden all three bikes, you've had more than enough time to think about it. Which one is it going to be? Very close, but I'm going to stick with the Monster. Right. I like the way you're looking at the Suzuki, just to put me off then. Yep. Yeah. I'm pleased because I think the power thing is something to do with that bike and I'm pretty sure it can be sorted. Yeah, if that can be looked at and solved easily, and I think it's a small fault, then um, it's the bike for us. Great, because I was going to say, because it's for Terry too. Yep, I'm sure she'll be more than happy with this. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we need to go and haggle on the price then, don't we? Yeah. Let's go and see the dealer. Okay. Today's deal is being done at File Superbikes in Blackpool. Kareem will be trying to haggle with Peter Taylor over the Monster, which is currently on sale for 3995 So we've come to the dealership and we have Kareem here with Peter, commonly known to his friends as Turkish, so we'll see how friendly we get Kareem. Uh, so if you guys want to chat away, I'll just sit quiet. Okay, well first of all, let me thank you for letting me try the three bikes out. Uh, all three are very good, thoroughly enjoyed them all. Uh, but I have made a decision and my favourite of the three is the Ducati Monster. Oh good, I'm glad you enjoyed the, the test rides. I'd be keen to sort of try another Ducati because the one I did actually use yes. there seemed to be a slight glitch in the engine performance. Uh, I'm sure it's just a minor thing, uh, but I need to sort of really compare one that's running properly before I make a final decision. That's right. So I think that'd be a good, good the idea. The one you try is approximately a year old, so we could get you out on a, an up-to-date uh, sure. test bike. Yeah. Uh, on the new Ducatis, the advantage is the 4995 for a new bike. A £1,000 more than for a new bike. A £1,000 more. Um, I'm not over keen on a new bike, I never have been, because I think you're paying out for VAT unnecessarily, things like that. So for me, it would always be a good second-hand newish bike. Uh, so I would, would probably end up going for a second-hand bike. What generally happens now, Kareem, is that the bike that goes into the guys and there's a 36-point checklist that they have to go through. Okay. which covers from the headstock, the bearings, the brake pads to everything. So they have to go right through that. So right. in that, that little guilt you, you mentioned about mm -hmm. the bike, we probably get picked up on. So right. that would get fully checked out before it came to you, valeted and ready to go. So let's get down to business and talk finance. Well on that, it's up at 3995. Yeah. And a good discount on that would be a 37. 200 pounds lower. Yeah. You're going to have to try a lot harder than that, I'm afraid. Yeah. I mean, that's not offering very much at all, is it? Well, it's £300. It's, it's a lot of money on a, on a, a 3995 bike. Perhaps, but I mean, for a bike that's a year old, that has got a slight glitch, said it's only a temporary thing, but uh, 37 for, for a bike that's... I think, you know, you should be looking at least at dropping another, what, £300 on top of that. We can meet some people. I've never known Peter's speechless. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I do have some advantages. I have other bikes, so it's not a necessity. Right, yes. um, you would have to work very hard for me to part with my cash, I'm afraid. Mm. And I mean, perhaps there's a middle ground, but um, at the moment, 3.7 is not uh, doing a lot for me. Sorry. It's very difficult, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> very hard. He's a good man. He's a good man. Well, well if we go another £100 for you, Cream. Don't forget we have to check and look round on that. Do, so um, you're looking at 30, 3,600 pounds. Yeah, um, it's, 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 an free, there, yes. it's an old free Ducati. It's a year old, uh, so yeah. it's, it's a nice bike, no problem it's at all with that. What we can do there, yeah. you've got 400 pounds, yes. Yeah. How about if we do the service on it as well? The service on it? Before I purchase it? Before or? you purchase it. 
What would the service entail? So the service will be oil and filter, right. check belts, mm-hmm. check in the 36 point check, the pads and everything, price, but it won't be an oil change. Right. What we'll do for you now, we'll do an oil and filter change, then do the service, what's due, stamp your boot. So in with the servicing then, does that include a full tank of gas then, Peter? Oh, you're trying me hard today, oh, aren't you? Me. You're doing well. We will give you a full tank of gas as well. So, full tank of petrol. What about the tax on the bike? How long has that got to run? The tax, I'd have to check on that for just right. how long it's, it's left. I'm just thinking ways we can sort of meet in the middle here. What we generally do, when second-hand bikes come to us, we don't generally uh, tax them. We let them go with the tax that's on if it needs taxing. Right. That's down to yourself. Obviously, we tax new bikes. Okay. I think we're getting there. But I think a tank of petrol, we're getting there. a service, and at 36, it's a good buy. I'd have to, um, I'd have to think on this. That's um, fine. And and I'll call Terry and perhaps even take the bike out again. Just Not a problem. problem. Yeah. That's fine. It's been, yeah, it's been It's been fun. I'm it's very interested. And the I weather's been good. <laughs> I thought we'd lost them then. <laughs> well, you have to do whatever you can to get the best deal. Oh, what? <laughs> that's only fair. Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot. Please. Thank you. So, Kareem, do you think you actually got the deal you wanted? We're getting there. <laughs> oh, you drive a hard bargain. It's good to see you, actually, though, in there. Well, I've got Peter's details now, mm. so I'll have a chat with Terry, yep. and then we'll take a decision. Get the thumbs up from the missus. Always a good idea. Definitely right. Yeah. So you can have another blast on it? Yes. Yeah. Well, you let me know how you get on. If well, you end up with one. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks a lot, Kareem. Thank you. And we'll see you next week for some more Used Bike Heaven. Having fallen in love with the Ducati Monster, Corrine went on to buy the 600cc version with added extras and at a more suitable price. Join us again next week for another used bike heaven.